So one of the most important parts about attaching orchids to trees, it's beginning to feel a lot like Christmas. Well, in the middle of July, what could be more Christmassy than decorating a tree? We're going to be putting all those Dendrobium fimbriatum kikis and some other things onto this beautiful tree. It's going to be ideal. It loses most of its leaves in winter and then gets a cover in summer. So it, it will keep the summer heat down and bring up the heat during winter and allow them for enough light to photosynthesize during those winter periods and not allow them to get too cold. Because in winter, we really want to ensure that our orchids can get maximum light because we have fewer light hours and the sun is less strong. So that's why we like these deciduous trees to pop our orchids onto, especially all those dendrobiums who like lots and lots of light. So let's show you what we're going to put on and how we're going to do it. Welcome to the Nature Company. If this is the kind of information you're interested in, please hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already and that notification bell to be notified of all our upcoming content so you don't miss out on a thing. Here's some of the equipment we're going to be using and a variety of different orchids. So we're going from dendrobiums, cattleyas, these are the sun-loving cattleyas, cattleya lobata, this is a variation alba. We've got an encyclia, some more dendrobiums, a vanda, Selogeny, this is Selogeny Diana, and we'll show you why we're going to be using that. Some Dendrobium nobles, and of course some bromeliads. And you ask, why do we often put bromeliads on the same trees that we're putting our orchids in? Well, for one reason, because they hold that moisture content inside their vases, they help maintain humidity in and around the orchids. So that's always a good thing. And the fallacy of them breeding mosquitoes is not necessarily true. They feed from their vase and often the oxygen content of the water is not that viable for mosquito larva to hatch. And unless you spray in constantly with pesticides, often they produce that whole little ecosystem inside their vase and any mosquito hatchlings or larva are generally eaten by predatory insects. So they don't bring as many mosquitoes as people like to think they do it's generally they have other water standing stagnant somewhere else. Bromeliads are not as much of a worry as what people like to think. So as we go through planting these up, we'll go through their different names. And then we have our ladder in position. Let's get to climbing. First, we're going to do the Cattleya lobata variation alba. This is a full sun Cattleya from Brazil. So it's going to like getting the full sun that we're going to be getting at this specific point along with our dendrobiums. So we'll just find a nice place to set it in. And because we've got such a big trunk, I'm not going to be winding meters and meters of string around it. All I'm going to be using is we've got this nice pocket and we'll just put a couple of nails into the tree to hold the pocket in place. The nails, you don't have to set all the way in, you just set them in so you can hook the pocket over the nail. And you stretch the pocket slightly to ensure that it's sitting right up against the tree. If you want to, be sure you can knock the nail around to just set it back so that it's going to stay on fast and won't blow off. There we go. We can just using the three nails. I've pulled the pocket taut enough that it's held up against the the bark of the tree. And now this orchid is just going to root through the basket and onto the tree. This bark is just going to hold the extra moisture it needs as it sets in. So here we have this encyclia that's been not doing so well on this mount. It was put out of the way and forgotten about and allowed to dry out. So it's looking really, really sad. So we're going to be putting it onto this tree as well. Spring is just coming. As you notice, there's clouds in the sky. The rain's about to start. 
and at least here we'll be able to keep an eye on it and once it's set in back properly it's going to be taking almost identical treatment as what this dendrobium noble will need and it will flourish so let's get to putting that on all we'll do is cut off the really dead desiccated old parts at the back end and these front end parts that really didn't manage to survive the drying it's not ideal only having two pseudo bulbs but i'm sure this is still going to survive because these are really tough hardy orchids so notice i don't have a pocket for this so all i'm going to be doing to get this on onto the tree without the pockets is by setting a frame up of four nails that I'm just going to be tapping in slightly into the tree. This is going to give me a long section at the end of the nail that I can then use to tie around and help me set the orchid into position. So all we'll do is now set the encyclia in the middle of that yeah, you can use string, but I've got this wonderful Scooby wire that we use all the time. It just makes tying easier because you just wind around and it stays. Tie that on and then we just crisscross around and over through the orchid and around those nails. And that provides a really secure and tight mount or hold for your orchid. There we go, see that's not going anywhere now. It's held tight onto the tree itself and no wind or anything's going to be able to pull that off. And now that's another easy way of getting an orchid onto a tree. We have our Dendrobium Hamana Lake. This has got some nice little kikis growing on it on some of these nice old canes. So what I'm going to be doing with this is I'm going to be removing one of these old canes with some of the kikis on because the kikis are still relatively small although they're big enough to be removed now but then you want to put them into a pot where they can be looked after so here I'm going to be putting them out into the wild so I'll just remove the whole cane which is going to give that extra energy that the kikis need to be able to survive any harshness that's going to happen so let's just get in there we've chosen our old cane with some of those new kikis on with the good roots and go in right at the base and cut that off. This is going to give us the most beautiful, small, prolific pink flowers or pinkish purple flowers. They really are an exquisite dendrobium, something we should all have in our collection. Yeah, because it's a fairly upright species, I want to put it here into the fork of the tree and we can have this fairly upright plant in the center. It's just going to give us those amazing blooms. And setting something into a fork can be difficult or it can be incredibly easy the way i'm going to do it is i'm basically just going to set it in and horror upon horrors i'm going to be putting a nail through the pseudobulb itself through that old cane all i'm going to do is put a nail through there and then allow those roots then to set itself onto the tree so this is not for the faint-hearted look away if you hate gore try and avoid the electrical cable to our solar lights and tap that straight in now already you can see this is not going anywhere the wind's not going to blow it away with spring coming now these roots are going to set on super quickly so that's just going to be perfect and again another very sad sorry Dendrobium perichia. For some reason I've been battling to keep these alive in pots no matter what I do. So what I'm going to be doing, taking these old canes off, see where they've started to die here. And they've got their little kikis growing on the ends. So we're going to be able to save those kikis. And dendrobiums generally do better on trees anyway. So we should be able to get them to grow here. Yeah, with our Hamana Lake, has an upright growth habit, we can use our parishii, which is going to have short, 
stumpy almost pendulous canes that we're then going to put just underneath it and the two should grow together quite well. Here we can probably just tear these apart. And again here I'm just going to be putting nails through these dead parts of these pseudobulbs. So it's not going to affect it in any way. Because it's so small, I don't want to wrap some cloth or something around it because the roots can rot relatively easily. We'll just set those in, sew those tiny little roots of these little kikis are up against the bark of the tree. So there's no damage to these, what's left of these pseudobulbs. It's only gone through those dead parts. So we're not affecting this. It's still going to be able to feed from those pseudobulbs and carry on growing. So hopefully we've got to those to save them before it's too late. And another Dendrobium noble that really didn't like the pot culture too much. So again, smashing it onto our tree. This time we're going to be putting it back around this side into the full sun as that's where they are going to generally do the best. Again, we have a, a light canopy up top that's going to filter off that hot summer sun, but during winter it's going to get majority sun most of the day. And this is what's actually going to make them flower at their best. So first of all, we just have a look around to see how it's going to fit nicely onto the tree. There we go, I think something like that's going to work best. We have this cane that's pretty much worn through here and is a bit bent over. But again, we're not going to be removing this because it can still feed itself both directions through the pseudobulb. So, Let's just get this onto the tree as a full-size plant, or what's left of the full-size plant. So here, because I've got a section here, I can put a nail right between them without actually damaging the plant at all. That's where we'll put our initial nail. And we see there's a small little bud coming up here. So we'll put the nail in underneath the pseudobulb here at an angle. And all we'll do tap the nail skew just to hook it around the pseudobulb to keep it tight to the tree. And again, that's not going to blow or move anywhere. So those should root on quite well. This is the Dendrobium Noble Sailor Boy. Below we have the Dendrobium Noble species. This is just the basic one that you'll find out in the wild. So the white is going to look so beautiful when they're both in flower up against each other. And I'm going to be clumping all of these together because I want one big mass of a single color to match up with the large mass that I have below. Especially with these dendrobiums, if you're setting them in late winter, spring is just around the corner and those roots will grow incredibly quickly and set themselves onto the tree. And we're just gonna pop one of these miniature bromeliads here in between the orchids just helping to maintain those humidity levels in and around. Put two nails really close to each other and wedge the plant upright in between. And then you can just use a little bit of a tie to hold it in place. And these little bromeliads are really tough. As long as you're just keeping moisture in the vase, they're going to be fine. So now we're going to be doing the death defying acts of climbing up the ladder and putting it on the branches. Come, let's go have a look. So here we have a, a little seedling, Dendrobium aphylum. This is gonna get those beautiful, long, pendulous canes 
that just get covered all the way down in those beautiful pink flowers. So this is one of the reasons we're putting it up high so this can hang down and we're going to be able to view the spectacle from down below. So we're going to be mounting it hanging down. I'm going to be using a fairly thin twine because we can see how thin and small these pseudobulbs are and anything bigger is just going to crush or cover them up and we want them to get as much light and air movement as possible so that, so that they're not going to rot. Remember, don't look down. <laughs> Okay, so we just got to get in and pull it tight. We'll have to go through the plant at least twice to make sure it's nice and secure. And then we can just go through and tie it off. Now it's always a good thing when you're tying something onto a tree like this is to use a material that is going to decompose. This is a natural cotton, so this, after a while, is just going to decompose and not cause any problems by restricting the tree itself. So, remember, the branches of the tree are going to continually expanding out and we don't want to constrict the growth. So, use a natural fiber so that it will decompose. And by the time this decomposes, the orchid will have rooted on. And back down! Remember, don't take the shortcut down. <laughs> now, we've made this plastic wire boat that we want to plant an orchid into. We're going to attach this to the tree in this position here. And this will allow the media to be filled up. So, the easiest way to do it, initial nail first. That way. You can then hook the one side on and then set the other side in position. Then what I will do to ensure that this isn't going to fall anywhere is bend that nail over and up. And then that's going to hold the boat securely in position as I fill it. It may have been easier to do a, a closed pocket to do this but I'm wanting to plant a Selogeny Diana. This is going to get those amazing bronze brown cream flowers that are going to hang almost a meter down. So these, this I'm going to be putting up here. And the reason I need such a big pocket is because they like moisture. So I'm going to be filling it with orchid bark chunks and sphagnum moss. The sphagnum moss is to ensure that it holds the moisture for longer. So first we set the orchid in so that the growing points are towards the tree because this will then eventually root onto the tree itself as well. And then we'll just go filling in bit by bit, mixing the bark and the sphagnum moss and there we go. It's all set in nicely. It's in securely enough that the wind's not going to blow it away. If you wanted to, you could still go further and tie it back. But I have faith that this is going to hold. And here we have another one of those old faithfuls, the Dendrobium nobles. All I'm going to be doing is now using a piece of old denim. So this is just a an old pair of my denim jeans that's uh, ripped into these long shreds and this is a perfect thing to tie them onto. It's going to hold just enough moisture to help it root and by the time it's rooted on it will disintegrate and not cause any damage to the environment or the tree or the orchid. So one of the most important parts about attaching orchids to trees is to ensure you've secured the orchid properly before you fall off your ladder. You don't want to have to try climb back up again with a broken leg. Okay, we notice it's still loose. The piece wasn't tight, it wasn't long enough to wrap around the second time. So I'm going to just grab another piece and then wrap it around this end. 
There we go, nice and secure now. At last, our Dendrobium fimbriatum, we're going to be putting that on. And what we'll do is we'll cover up the roots. So we'll use the cloth to cover the roots, but we're not going to cover the base of those pseudobulbs. We'll just cover the roots and then tie the canes down, but leaving the bases of those pseudobulbs open so that it can produce those nice basal shoots and produce the canes from down there. We don't want to cover those up and cause any problems. Even though we, we're using this denim that will disintegrate, it's still going to remove the light from those basal shoots and they might just either rot or die off. So we want to ensure that we have the best chance of survival for these plants. And another one of those amazing long pendulous dendrobiums, the Dendrobium anosmum. This also next to the aphylum, I'm going to be putting it. Its mount is disintegrating slowly. So I'm not going to remove it from the mount at all. I'll just remove the hook. And use the mount as part of what is going to help hold the orchid to the, the trunk. And that's one of the ways you can mount your orchid onto the tree without disturbing or damaging any of the roots if it is already on a mount. Okay, only four more to do. There's Dendrobium lodigesii. This is going to be a beautiful little thing that we're just going to put on and it's hopefully going to spread in and around the other orchids and on the bark of the tree. It's really a stunning little one. And Dendrobium lindleyi, because you shouldn't have to live without those big cascading yellow blooms in your life. Really, really worth it. And of course, our Dendrobium noble variegated. Might not be terribly easy to come by at the moment, but at some point you'll be able to get one yourself. And those great big giant pink cattleyas that I showed you how to do the back bulb propagations from. We can see they've got a new leaf coming. So if we gently pull it out. Ah, there we go. We see those new roots setting from that new shoot. So this cattleya propagation, we're going to be putting it in a pocket. This is to hold the extra moisture that it's going to be needed while this little youngling matures. So we're going to be using a medium grade bark so that it can hold that little bit of extra moisture while it grows. So as you have seen, not tapping these nails in too deep, it gives you that area to lash or tie your orchid onto to help keep it in position. Or just to make it loose like that. The other reason that we do this is so once your orchid has rooted on properly, we can just go through and remove these nails. That way it's, the tree can just heal over that small little wound that the nail left and carry on growing. Just makes it easier for everything that they can just be removed quite easily without causing any problems. And if you have any preferred method of mounting onto trees, just drop it down in the comments below if I've missed it and let's have a look at it too. And also if you want any advice on what media you should or shouldn't be putting onto your trees that may affect it in any way, just ask and we'll get back to you. And if you prefer a traditional Christmas tree, let us know in the comments down below and let's see who wins out. And thank you for watching. If you have found any of this information helpful, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button down below and that notification bell, bing bong, to be notified of all our upcoming content so you don't miss out on a thing. Help us grow as we help your orchids grow.